Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll click the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Safa, and today we're investigating weighted list squares implementation in eViews, and we've got our simple data set in our hands that records both inflation and unemployment on annual frequency for the UK during the period from 1855 over to 2022. And uh, we can estimate our baseline equation, which um, as usual will be the adaptive expectations Phillips curve, which regresses inflation on unemployment and lagged inflation. And uh, if we're interested in using weighted least squares to address heteroscedasticity in this model, we first have to detect one. So for example, if we go to residual diagnostics, heteroscedasticity tests, and pick, let's say, Harvey test, again, if you're interested in all possible heteroscedasticity tests and the procedures and reviews, please check one of our previous videos out. Let's stick with Harvey test for now. We'll see that we have indeed detected heteroscedasticity significant at 1%, with the, the logarithm of squared residual being explained by our original independent variables, which are unemployment and lagged inflation, with inverse relationship between the variance of residuals, or log variance to be precise, and unemployment, and a direct positive relationship between the log variance of residuals and lagged inflation. And here we can use the results of this test to motivate our weighted least squares implementation. Let's pick unemployment first. We have got a negative relationship between uh, residual scatter and unemployment. If we treat it as pure heteroscedasticity, just one variable impacting our um, residual variability, we can perform a weighted least squares in quite a simple way. If we believe that the volatility of uh, residuals decreases um, with unemployment, we can simply multiply every single um, of our uh, variables by unemployment, and that would constitute a weighted least squares estimator. So we multiply our original dependent by unemployment, we multiply our constant by unemployment, which as the constant is just a column of ones, would just leave us with unemployment in place of the original constant. Then we multiply unemployment by unemployment, yielding unemployment squared, and then we multiply lagged inflation by unemployment as well. And if we run this model, we'll get the following results. Again, this is our new constant, this is our new unemployment coefficient, and this is our new lagged inflation coefficient. We have C, we can see that both the coefficients and the standard errors have changed, reflecting the properties of the weighted least squares estimator. Here we have filtered out the impact of pure heteroscedasticity, but the assumption is really rigid. We only accounted for the impact of unemployment on our residual variance, and we pre-assumed that it's on volatility, the effect is, and that the effect is inverse. It's um, one over x sort of relationship. There is also a more straightforward way of implementing weighted list squares without having to change our original coefficients, and that is to go to estimate options and select the weights for our weighted least squares procedure. We can select our inverse standard deviation weights, again, just as we assumed initially, and our weight series will be unemployment. And if we click OK, we'll see that we'll um, get exactly the same result out as with the previous procedure where we multiplied every single uh, of our variables by unemployment. This is exactly what eViews does uh, in the background and uh, saves us a lot of time and uh, makes the coefficients way easier to interpret. We can also input other assumptions, for example, if inverse variance is proportional to unemployment, if it's 1 over x squared, shall we say, or if we were to transform um, our data, we would have to multiply by square root of unemployment in this case. Well, then we get um, new coefficients and new standard errors back immediately. However, what to do if uh, it's not pure heteroscedasticity, but some uh, more sophisticated 
form of heteroscedasticity that we care about. So we are back to the original regression equation and we are back to our Harvey test results. Well, here we have got an estimation of what the relationship between uh, log squared residual and the variables in question is. And we can actually use our weighted least squares um, framework to input this function as our residual variant. So if we go estimate um, and go to the weighted least squares uh, tab, we can estimate our variance as the exponent, again, because Harvey test uses log squared residual as its dependent, which is quite natural. Then we input the constant for the Harvey auxiliary regression, the coefficient for unemployment times unemployment. And we add 0 0.0932, which is the coefficient for inflation, again, to four decimal places times inflation minus one, lagged inflation. And as we input that, we'll see that in this case, we have directly accounted for the functional form of heteroscedasticity that has been estimated by Harvey test. And this is directly translatable into this weighted least squares model that can be quite easily estimated in eViews. However, there are several issues with weighted least squares. First of all, it does assume that you exactly know what the heteroscedasticity structure is. And second, it might introduce some bias into the coefficients, as obviously the problem with heteroscedasticity is inefficiency, so the, the errors might be uh, misrepresented. However, the coefficients can actually fluctuate quite widely if we introduce some sophisticated weighted least squares procedure. So always keep an eye out for it and reserve weighted least squares for very uh, glaring cases of pure heteroscedasticity or where you have got um, some um, strong presumptions about what the functional form of heteroscedasticity is. And that's all there is for estimating weighted least squares and interpreting its results in eViews. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.